Hello everyone, this is Robin from mirobin.com. Today I'm going to share how I work as a front-end developer. No matter how big or small site it is, I always try to make the code organized and readable for others. As a front-end developer, in most cases, people make mistake that they don't need to plan how they're going to start the work or maintain the project. They think this is not their work. Although this is necessary to save your time, reduces stress when you have a tight deadline and also need to maintain the code for a long time. But remember one thing during your development, always be curious. Don't be afraid to try new things like plugin, techniques, new CSS animation. It's 2016 and if you or your boss is still afraid of i6 or 7, then I'm afraid you are missing the beauty of modern web. So let's start with code editor. As a front-end developer, I find it really important to choose what kind of editor is best for you. Well, some people think those who use Dreamweaver as a code editor is a dump. But I believe no matter which editor you are using, if you are comfortable fast then definitely go with it. But you should also check the other editor as well. To kickstart, you should definitely try some of this. So number one on my list is Atom by GitHub. It's an open source means you can download for all free. It has a file system browser which allows you to navigate fast to your project file. It has search and replace option, a clean UI and you can install it on a Mac, Windows or Linux. So number two in my list is Notepad++, which is extremely popular and some features, same features like the first one. And it's, it's for free, so you can definitely check this one for first. So number three on my list is BB Editor by Beerbones. Well, this one is the most advanced one and it has a built-in FTP and SFTP features, but only available for Mac and it's not for free. Number 4 on my list is Bracket, open source editor by Adobe that focuses on front-end development and web design process. It offers a live preview which I find really interesting and definitely you should check that out. And number 5 is Sublime Text, my favorite one. Great alternative to powerful IDE. Sublime Text is easy to use and excellent UI and UX. There are tons of Sublime plugin available. The functionality can improve easily and customization is just one plugin installation away. So let's say you have been assigned for a project which you need to maintain for a long run or maybe a single landing page. So let's start with planning. For landing page checklist, say you need to code for a page with a very few sections. For example, this PSD as you can see here are very few layout, same section are almost same just I need to change some text and images. So if you are planning to add the whole framework of bootstrap or maybe foundation then stop right there and think about less or says. If you don't know about less or says, please check the description below. I'm adding some of the links where I have learned about less and says. So let me drag the project folder to my code editor. Okay, I usually work with less. So here is the layout, how I meant it. As you can see, I have two folders. One is for development and other is for production. In development folder, I put all my assets like plugins, framework files etc. In JS folder I have the library I'm going to use for example jQuery library here and there is a file called custom JS where I'm going to put all the triggers for of the plugins. So let's dig deeper to the less files first. Here is the folder called custom as you can see there are a couple of less files first let me open the style.less so here I have added all the part and module well I love to use my way of CSS management but it's almost based on SMAX which is stand for a scalable and modular architecture for CSS. If you don't know about it please visit those sites that I have mentioned in the description you can learn more about there. But here I'm going to give you a very small idea about how this is working. Previously if you ever haven't used any kind of CSS preprocessor what you're going to do is uh, you're going to edit the reset first and then common CSS then typography and so on here we are almost doing the same but a better way as you can see I have imported all my other less files first is variable dot less you might be wondering what the world variable is doing in CSS well it's like JavaScript variable you are declaring something which you can use again and again to your entire code so in case if you need any kind of changes all you need to change the variables not the entire code. For example you choose a sky color as a primary color. Now some days later your boss or client says 
I want to change the whole theme color. If this thing happened with CSS, you would have to go through entire code and change all the hexadecimal color you just put. But in less, all you need to change the variable file. Again, please check the description below so that you can learn more about the less. Next is bootstrap.less. I know what you are thinking. I just said do not use the full bootstrap framework. Well, I'm not using all the CSS of it. I'm going to use only those I need. Let me open the bootstrap.less. Here, what they did is added all those less files. I will comment those files that I don't need in this project. Next is base.less. Here I'm adding all my default style, which will be used as the same all over the pages. For example, my reset CSS. Since I'm using bootstrap, it's already added resets. So I'm not using the resets again here. After that, I'm putting the typography, uh, a tag headlines, other very common module, which I've been using for entire website. So next is the layout.less. In layout file, I'm going to put the major section for example, the navigation, top header, footer layout, so anything which is reusable. I repeat, anything which is reusable and major layout. Those should be put right here. Next is the module. Uh, this contain all those small things like buttons, thumbnails, models, level style, tags, widgets, search and so on. Well, some people divide those modules in different files. For example, button.less or thumbnail.less and import those files to the module.less. But I'm okay to combine all these files into single file. So next is the state. This is one of the interactivity of the page. For example, you hover state for navigation. Uh, for example, you have a class.active state, uh, some kind of animation hidden or uh, a tab, accordion, carousel. These things are putting right here in the state. So a state dot list is for all about these things. I put another one for responsive dot less. Well, that may not seem good practice to you, but I love to put all my media queries in one place. So number six is theme dot less. Here I put all my uh, color CSS. For example, think about you are working for a dashboard. You have to give the option to the user uh, to change the color. So div team is asking for different style sheet or say you have class like bg ash or text primary text uh, hover i put all these things uh, right here so that's all for css let's go to the js folder here as you can see there is a main file called plugin.js where i will import all the plugins that i'm going to use and another file is custom.js here i'm going to put all the triggers of those plugin and my other custom js code so we have seen all those files now big question is how I will compile those well some people use gulp or grant but I love to use apps for task running let me show you one this is prepos definitely one of the best it's not for free but you can try the free version so for compiling you have to drag all your files here it's loading as you can see if you click on those individual file in right side where it's showing me the option what to do with those let's select style.less and output should be my production folder then css and it should be style.css you also have the option to do auto compile that means it will update your output file every time you save it auto prefix will put all those prefixes you need for example if you're using transform or transition from CSS3, it will put all the other CSS prefixes for you. Source map. Well, this one is interesting. Think about you already written good amount of code and during debugging, you will inspect to check where your file is. But CSS won't show you the less link, right? But if you check the option, it will show you the less line in your inspector. Another option is compress, which will minify all your CSS file. What about HTML? When I start coding, I usually start HTML structure first. Let's start with header. Well, as you can see here, we don't have anything for the header but the logo. So I create a header tag from HTML5 with a class of header wrapper. Inside, we will have the container from bootstrap class. 
inside that we will have the row and then a tag with a class of brand hit the tab and voila your code is already been written how this things possible with image image by image you can uh, make all your HTML uh, writing so fast so if you want to know about more about image you can check the description so think we have done with your beautiful structure code a beautiful site is done what next number one is HTML validation check let me show you search on Google HTML validation click on the first link here I will copy all my co HTML code and check the validation as you can see it's giving me some guideline how I can uh, make it 100% validated number two don't forget to check the cross browser compatibility I usually check IE Mozilla Chrome Opera and sometimes UC browser number three upload your project to your test server if you have any and check the Google page speed test well this is really important for SEO so try to make the score at least 70 plus like validation here Google will show you some of the guidelines so that you can make it up to 100% so if all these things done you are ready to show your work all right so that's all for now I try to cover very basic you have Google to try search all the terms I said you can subscribe to my channel to get notified about my next video thanks for watching